What is this? You would think we have hit the high point of the Kimberley. Watching an island just emerge from the ocean, waterfalls rushing down it, it is insane. But as this week proves, there is something else spectacular waiting to be discovered around every corner. That's the portal to the core of the mountain. And in every cove. Pretty high up now. Wow, man, this waterfall is sick. See if there's a pool at the top of the rainbow. This is awesome. And when we thought it couldn't get any better. I feel like I'm in a fairyland. There's a very, very mysterious noise, like... A strange noise has left us feeling perplexed and puzzled. Did you hear that? Maybe a rock fell, but it... Keeps happening. That's really weird. Really, really. It's not... Can you hear that? Maybe this is the end of the world. <laughs> Welcome back to the Kimberley. It is sunrise on another day. Um, we've got a fair few miles to cover today. What is that, 50, 60 miles, babe? 50 miles today. Should be good. Properly just burn some diesel, to be honest, because there hasn't been much wind around. Last week, we left you guys at Raft Point, and today we're picking up anchor and heading across the pond, down through a spectacular maze of islands, and arriving at Jugong Bay. Good morning, everyone. It is another beautiful day in the Kimberleys. Beautiful day for, looks like, a motor <laughs> so far. I'm not sure if any wind will come in. Perhaps there will be some wind that comes in. We'll see, we'll soon find out. All right, anchors up. Let's get into it, let's get into it. So, the wind's come in, gracious with its presence. We're now sitting on about five and a half knots and the lovely rattling sound of the engine that you've probably come to love and adore throughout this trip is um, taking a break. <laughs> Soapstown says editing you a masterpiece. What are you doing, sir? I think editing a masterpiece. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, happy with this, this is good. I've just come up and we are cruising along very nicely. Simon's done a very good job of keeping us moving along. It's beautiful out here. But our luck of having some wind was very short lived. It was soon a beautiful motor sail, followed shortly after with just a motor. Once again, putting ripples in beautiful silky water. All right, <clears throat> midday report. Sailing has stopped. It's gone severely glassy again, as you can tell. Engine's back on, motoring along. I put a cake in the oven. See how that turns out. Not very good at baking. And um, that's about it, really. <laughs> so I just smelt this really ghastly smell and I was like, oh no, has like the epoxy thinners or like the, you know, the catalyst or something like that spilt. I'm looking around thinking maybe an aerosol can's been punctured. It's just so cake. Legit smells like paint thinners or something. And we like we had five oranges left. I think we donated two of them to the cake fund. We'll see how it tastes but I'm thinking we might have been better off eating those oranges. <laughs> It'll probably taste all right. I'm not a good baker. I ne have never said I'm a good baker. It's probably gonna pass out being downstairs yet. It smells really bad. You start seeing it's like hallucinating. That smells like you're sniffing paint thinners down there, honestly. Oh, God. Oh, I can't talk. Your bacon's going downhill, my fish is going downhill. Soap's forgotten how to bake, I've forgotten how to fish. I think we might be on, on the hammer. Maybe not. And uh, that's a negative. Uh, seaweed on the uh, diving board fish. 
Yeah, anyway. Cruising on in. Describe it. <laughs> the top's like real chewy, like almost toffee like, and the middle's kind of like a silken tofu. Oh my god. It's like eating an orange bottle. <laughs> it's chewy, hey. So my cake wasn't too much of a success. Soph came out this morning last night, she was reading recipes and everything. She read a few recipes, had them in mind. She comes out this morning and goes, you know what? I'm just gonna make up my own orange cake. And then, <laughs> you have it. Sophie's trademarked orange blue tack. Or it's like blue tack kind of consistency, eh? Like you could definitely stick a poster to the wall with it. I think it's blue tack when you can have a tack. <laughs> so, anyway, there goes like half our sugar and 50% of our oranges. But a rubbery orange thong cake won't detract from what we're about to traverse through. Apart from dodgy cake, which I've just gone back for seconds off, we're cruising through some pretty pretty places. This is a little bit different to the other days. It's just like this cake's a little bit different to other cakes. But it's still good. That was insane. We're coming into, once again, another beautiful place. This area is sort of like a very intricate maze of islands. There are lots and lots of islands here and we're sneaking through the channel. It's spectacular, it's really beautiful. Very excited for this bay. So we're heading to Dugon Bay. I think there's gonna be like three waterfalls, which is so good for, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and uh, yeah. We often get asked how we got into sailing and how this whole thing came to be. And the answer to that question is, I was actually a boat kid. Like us, my parents set off sailing in their 20s aboard their 30-foot boat. And when they welcomed my brother and I into this world, well, they also welcomed a bigger boat for us to all fit on and we set off sailing. This affected my brother and I a little differently as while my brother now resides in the mountains far away from the ocean, I have chosen a life at sea. I learned everything I know from my mum and now, so can you. What are we trying to do? <laughs> Get to Hobart. <laughs> yes, my mum owns a recognised Royal Yachting Association and an approved Australian Sailing Safety and Sea Survival Training Centre, Paper Sailors Rock. Paper Sailors Rock offers something for everyone from beginner to advanced, including an array of RYA accredited courses such as Competent Crew, Day Skipper, Coastal Skipper and Mile Builders that stretch from Tasmania to the Whitsundays. Or the Safety and Sea Survival course, which I highly recommend anyone wishing to go to sea do as it's a huge eye-opener with practicing deploying and surviving in a life raft. As well as learning how to use distress flares as you don't want to set your hand alight in an emergency situation. When completing the Paper Sailors Rock course, you'll have my awesome mum, an offshore yacht master and instructor, teaching you the tricks of the trade in a calm and inclusive environment, in the classroom and aboard the beautiful Fika, a Nyad 490. Any overnight expeditions will see you in a cosy and comfortable cabin with access to a hot shower, which is more than we've got aboard Nakama. Bakacha! And you'll be dining on fresh produce and wholesome boat cooked meals. Paper Sailors Rock is primarily based in Brisbane, Australia. 
However, opportunities arise all over the beautiful East Coast. You can check out the website with a link in the description below or just simply search papersailorsrock.com.au for all upcoming courses, trips and to see what else is on offer. With Christmas now only a couple more weeks away, this might be a great opportunity to gift a loved one with a unique experience and skill set that will last a lifetime. And with the new year just around the corner, what a great time to kickstart or expand on a new hobby. Paper Sailors Rock is offering you 10% off any course, trip or gift voucher from December to January. Just email or call with the details listed on the website and make sure you mention our code Slim and Soap and the discount will be applied. So if you want to learn how to sail or expand on your pre-existing sailing skills aboard a beautiful sailing vessel within a supportive learning environment that I myself learnt in, then make sure you check out papersailorsrock.com.au or check out the link in the description below. Alrighty, let's get back into it. It is crazy as you're coming through here seeing how much of this landscape would be hidden below the waterline on a high tide, like it's crazy. It's so cool that the water stains the rocks because you get an idea of what it would be like at high tide and then what's changed even given the discoloration of all the rocks. You can look at a little headland and be like, oh yeah, that's what you'd see of it if the water was at a different level or whatever. If that makes sense. I think what Slim is trying to get at is that by looking at the high water line that has been stained onto these rocks, you can get an idea of how high the water would get. And you can also see what would be hidden underneath the surface if it was higher water, which is a reminder to not cut any corners. We don't want, we don't want to cut that corner either. You don't want to cut that one. As we creep further and further inland, it just gets more and more stunning. The channel begins to narrow with many more islands and rocks that have you confused as to which way to go. We just had to like stop the engine for a sec and just be like, wait, which island are we looking at? There's so many islands here. It's um, pretty interesting navigating. We're back on our way. Yeah, we figured out, we got, there's all these islands and we're like, wait, which islands are we going between? There was like and then, a fork in the road and we're like, that way or that way? Yeah. <laughs> It just keeps on getting better and better. Oh, look at that though. It's nice. We've just come around into Dugong Bay and this bay is huge, far bigger than I thought it would be. And of course, stunning. Uh, we are still coming in. Almost there, almost, almost. We're determined, aren't we? Day is not over until we get a fish. <laughs> Any final words for the day? No, I have nothing to say about it. I guess like, what more can you say? It's just insane. And there's no one else here. Oh, crazy. I'm very excited to explore this place. And Dugong Bay would prove itself to be one of the most special places we have visited to date. I've just come for a little flick by myself. And of course, I've just spotted some little rock wallabies having a little tussle here. I've been trying to show you these things all trip. And I've seen them and the only camera I've got with me is the GoPro. They're about three, four metres away, but in the light, you just can't, you just can't see them. Slim's been on the hunt for a rock wallaby for a while now. Rock wallaby poo. I'd love to be able to show so for rock wallaby. And until now, I didn't believe him that he found some. 
I'm kicking myself I didn't bring another camera with me. They were so cute, having a little wrestle with each other and stuff. Damn. But apart from rock wallabies, as I mentioned, there are three waterfalls here and we can't wait to check them out. Wow, man, this waterfall's sick. We've been surviving off these fresh water sources for months now, and the sight of sweet, abundant fresh water never gets old. The coolness of the mist floating from above is a welcome relief to the harsh sun. We're like sponges, absorbing the beautiful moisture, making the most of every drop. Honestly, it's the simple things like just getting water. It's so good, you know? I love it. I love just like going and collecting water. When water collecting is this easy because there's so many waterfalls, it's just the best. So much fun. <laughs> I've added a funnel to my contraption, you know. Is that the water funnel? Just because you don't want it bush doesn't mean you can't do it right. <laughs> I'm Wait, holding on. Did you get my boot? Is that the water funnel? Oh yeah, it's the water funnel. I didn't want to mix it up for the oil funnel or the diesel funnel or the unleaded funnel. Tender, tender love and care. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was really good. It took me a while. <laughs> if you're wondering how do you keep your tender clean, well, welcome to the Kimberley's car wash. It's a bikini car wash. <laughs> We're doing a lucky draw. One patron will get a bikini car wash. If you can meet us in the Kimberley's tomorrow at this waterfall, bikini car wash. <laughs> Yeah. Who said Soph was going to be doing the bikini car wash? Yeah. It's going to be me. Let's go explore this waterfall now. This is so cool. Look at this. This in the wet season would be pumping. It would be in the water. This whole thing that we're climbing on, I don't think you wouldn't be able to climb on it. No way. It would just be pumping. You good? Woo. Pretty high up now. Let's see if there's a pool at the top of the rainbow. Oh, there is too. There is a pool! This is a pool! Wow! This is awesome! Standing here feels like we've just tackled Mount Everest. But this has really put how utterly massive these mountains are into perspective for us. This pool has our imaginations running wild. That's the portal to the core of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> we can just imagine, if you were to jump in, you'd be sucked into the vortex of the mountain and you'd end up in Narnia or Mordor. I'm genuinely curious to know how deep this is. It looks very dark and deep. Actually, I'm gonna put you under so you can see. But as it turns out, it's just a shallow, mossy rock pool. However, while it might not be a portal to another world, this area already feels out of this world.
We're on to number two of the three waterfalls. And surprisingly, despite being within the same bay, they're incredibly contrasting. We found another oasis. Just one of many in the Kimberley. So this is amazing. It's like a little rainforest retreat. How cool is this? Oh, big waterfall up there. Oh, no way! Should we oh. go check it out? Yeah. Ow! I always hit my head! <laughs> Just... Oh no! You hit your head, Boffin. So I've just clocked herself on that branch because she reckons she can't see under her hat. I saw this dog, big thud behind me. I'm always wearing like ridiculous hats that I can't see anything above my eye line and I always hit my head on things. I feel like I'm in a fairyland. That's pretty impressive. Ooh, there's water. This is probably the clearest water we've seen in the Kimberley yet. Sorry, there. So although there is a perfect swimming pool here, it's a little bit too low to sea level. And what we've heard is that on spring tides, the crocs crawl in as this floods on spring tides and they find their way to these pools. It's not too far elevated from sea level, so we're feeling a little bit sketched out. Also, alongside hearing that someone's been bitten by a croc here. So, we're not going to swim in that deep pool just in case there's one lurking. But, um, we'll see if we can swim somewhere else, hey? I so wish there wasn't crocs here, because this would be far more relaxing. <laughs> This was truly a lush green oasis hidden in a crack between the red rocks. But we can't stick around for too long or we'll have a repeat of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I feel. So we're trying our hardest to not get too distracted on the way out. There's no crocs in there. Circumnavigating the spot. <laughs> I was a little bit hesitant getting in as well. A plant touched my foot and it was a bit of a sus plant, not gonna lie. We're gonna go to prime shot of the bald spot there. Pretty good water. <laughs> There's no need to pack water bottles when you're going on an adventure around here because You've just got a, you've got a whole big water bottle right here. <laughs> yep, we tried to not get too distracted, but that doesn't mean that we were successful. Oh, it never stops in here. <laughs> the tender is again, basically high and dry on the rocks. The tides do not f around. Honestly, it was high when we left. Oh, is it all right? The tides do not mess around. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the croc's okay, this croc. The tender was fully afloat when we left it, and we weren't gone for long at all. At least it's sort of like a rock ramp right now. The tides literally rip in, pause for like 0.1 of a second before turning and ripping back out. You need to get oh, wait up, wait away up. from that water. Yeah, I've seen the lift. As we're up a drying creek, it's a bit of a race against the clock to get out before we can't. Ah. Right, I'll direct. Another very croc baity situation. Worth it for a good swim so far. Yep. Yes, yeah, nice. And then I reckon we just run along there. And then you should have a straight point. Yeah, you're good. You're good. A little bit to port. Alright, we're out. Woo! Oh man, another close call. The one thing that they say you shouldn't do up here is obviously go in the salt water. Oh, starboard, starboard. And so many times we've now just been... Port. 
rock bait in the water. <laughs> oh, it's, we've been pretty fortunate so far, but we're in now literally the second biggest tides in the world in this bay system here and we're just creeping up on spring tides so there is no mercy it's like instant there's no real slack water it's like rushes in and just rips back out we were not going along then the whole time being like all right let's quickly jump in go for a dip we'll check out this pool and then we're like we've got to leave we came back i was expecting maybe the nose that tended to be on the rocks because we pushed it pretty far out but the whole thing was just high and dry i also learned to let I cooked I should have put the prop up I didn't think about that I wasn't driving yeah so. that's, my, that's my fault I should have I was, I was thinking like, about it but I, I was that? like sure he'll be fine anyway that was waterfall number two in Dugong Bay uh should we check out the we'll third give, one we'll give it a whirl hey give it a whirl yeah we got a, a whirl. Bit, we got a bit of tide left we'll give it a whirl <laughs> yeah, it's us. the tides are brutal we can't do anything yeah we got a bit of tide on it we'll give it a whirl The next waterfall is around three miles away, across the other side of the bay. Not as exciting as the last one, is it? There is a little stream here, but yeah. Amazing. I wonder, do you reckon it's clean? I reckon that's salt water there. Well folks, you can't have it all. While there is a small trickling stream, it appears we're a bit too late in the season for this fall to be flowing. I go on back that way. We never knew what was waiting on the other side, so it was still worth the ride. But that does wrap up our day exploring this beautiful bay. There's a very, very mysterious noise, like... Distant thunder, like... Did you hear that? Yeah. It's like a distant thunder slash lightning. At first I thought a rock fell and I came no, out. No, I don't think it's like, it's definitely, it's not No, thunder. at first I was like, is that thunder? And then came out to look for a cloud, just being like, we haven't hurt. And then I was like, maybe a rock fell, but it... Keeps happening. That's really weird. Really, really. I hope it's not like an earthquake. I don't know. An earthquake. We're about to experience a tsunami. What is it? I'm trying to think is there any civilization sort of near us? I really hope the mic can pick this up. Maybe this is the end of the world. It sounds like it. Tomorrow in the war began style, you know out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it all starts out in the middle of nowhere. It's happening more frequently now. I don't know, babe. Unless a big, like, cliff's falling or something like that. But it's the same like noise landslide. over and over. It's not... Can you hear that? To me, it sounds like fireworks getting like i was like is it one of the big boats like exploding but it's not sporadic enough like are they culling or something do you reckon it sounds like but it sounds bigger than a gun that's the thing That noise had us absolutely baffled. But as you'll see <laughs> in some future episodes, uh, we weren't as far away, or we were no longer as far away from civilization as we thought. There's a ginormous mine site, and I think they were doing. Yeah, just mining this pristine paradise, unfortunately. As you do, as it, Australia does. Yeah, so <laughs> they're essentially just like there's an entire island that is mining, and I think they were doing some blasting, which explains us thinking that like the world was about to end yeah it was pretty but i mean this like racked simon's brain like simon's not one to let things go he's he's all night was just like what is this thing what is it it's like what could it possibly be and i i am like i brush things away the noise was like, too easier. identical <laughs> so like we knew like 
we knew. I start, I was like, it's definitely man-made, but it obviously wasn't a rifle. It was the same noise every time, so we started thinking like explosives or something, but we didn't know. But yeah, anyway. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. Yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed it, because it's going to be the last one for a week or two. Real Time Us has just had a pretty hectic uh, period of uni and exams and commitments and everything like that. It's the end of the year for us. We need a holiday. I'm sure a lot of you will be on holidays. Typically, videos don't perform that well um, over the Christmas New Year period, so we can't justify spending our Christmas on a laptop if the videos aren't really going to be seen anyway. So when everyone's finished with their holiday festivities and, and whatnot, whatever it is that anyone gets up to, uh, we'll be back here then to finish off the rest of the Kimberley series for you. So we hope it gives you something to look forward to. We hope you guys have a great holiday. We hope Merry that... Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to have a bit of a holiday <laughs> ourselves. And... Oh, something exciting to look forward to in the new year, though, is we're currently... Oh, do testing a little bit of we're doing a little bit of quality um and shipping and stuff testing with a few different brands to hopefully do up for the first ever like crew apparel or merch this hat's a little rendition to if you've been following along for a while like the old straw hat that miles had stitched the nakama lettering into for us so and then we've got like a plans t-shirt anyway more about that probably in the new year hopefully we find some suppliers we're happy with the quality um we the last thing we ever want to do is sell crap that we didn't stand by ourselves so we're wearing them in now and if they last and they're good last, bit, they've got to be put to the yeah they've got to be karma test they've got to be comfy they got to survive a few washes <laughs> or anything like that before we're willing to sell them but yeah we're testing a few different brands and hopefully we land something really awesome so stay tuned for that stay tuned for the rest of an, the rest of the seasons absolutely epic real time us has wrapped up filming the kimberly season so we're really excited to I mean, it's just been such a wild ride in the Kimberley, mm -hmm. and I really hope that you guys are enjoying it. I mean, by the looks of the comments, everyone loves the Kimberley. It is such a spectacular place. Mm. And we can't, yeah, we're, we're excited to, I mean, kind of like disappointed to wrap it up, but we're also excited to get onto the next. We're excited next for what's to come too. Little bit of the coastline, little bit of the coastline. There's a enormous lot, a big bit. stretch of coast, <laughs> there's a big stretch, stretch of, of coastline ahead. Um, like a little bit of coastline to come, it's like, it's a, WA is a massive coastline, so that's another thing to look forward to. Yeah. The next season's gonna be a bloody real wild ride. Wild ride, <laughs> it's gonna be a cracker. Oh, in saying that, we probably will do a bit of a wrap up. We've been speaking about it between ourselves. We'll probably do like a bit of a Kimberly wrap up for I don't know, sailors interested, or just anyone to hear our like thoughts on everything, because it's been such a big experience. It's been something we've put on a pedestal for years, and um, yeah, we want to do a wrap-up video of it probably once the series is complete, and we also think that's a great time to do a little bit of a Q&A. So, start thinking of some questions, um, feel free to send them in to us and stuff like that, and we'll probably do a little bit of a Q&A, because we've, like, it's been an epic series, and we've actually welcomed a, a whole bunch of new viewers. Um, to the channel oh. since launching this so so sounds like she's got something important she wants to add so yeah save some questions we would love to do like a bit of a q a or something like that for some of the newer folk that are following along and what is it that you were thinking uh i was just gonna say i made a post about it this week but thanks everyone for joining us on this journey oh, getting 30k 30, 30k of you Legends. now which is really great and yeah super awesome to see um yeah that yeah. number. So. Heaps of new patrons jumping on board too guys, which is freaking, that's not a swear word, freaking awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> like honestly it just makes the show possible and thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Like we've had such an epic time filming this Kimberly series for you and it just wouldn't be possible without being able to have camera gear and stuff like that and hard drives and SD cards and all of the stuff that goes into this. You guys make this production possible. We want to say a massive thank you and a massive thank you to all the new patrons that have jumped on board. 
legends honestly legends so yeah anyway so basically to cut through the mumble we're taking a couple of weeks off the laptops you can look forward to our first ever merch drop in the new year start compiling your questions or curiosities for a kimberly overview and q a thank you to our patrons thank you to all our subscribers and one more thing don't forget there is a great opportunity for you to get some discounted sailing lessons from my sailing extraordinaire mother and i think that's about it guys Merry Christmas. We're happy to break. Christmas. We'll see you very shortly. Stay tuned. Have a for great March. holiday season. Enjoy everything. everything. Have fun. <laughs> enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the rain. Enjoy it all the same. Enjoy the snow for the northern hemispherians. Enjoy that. Alright. That's it from us. <laughs> oh, say bye to Chile. One sec. Say bye to Chile, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's Christmas time.